Breaking news first at four, a tragedy right before Christmas. Two people are dead, and we've learned one is a Garden City grandmother. We're live with what we're learning from the scene. And COVID complications for the Lions with several coaches in quarantine. What's next for Saturday's game? Here's Nick. A woman was caught red handed in Wyandotte stealing packages off of porches. Just wait until you hear how long she could spend in prison. We did it. We got 50 degrees in spots today, but we're already seeing rain. We'll get more tonight. And then the question is how much snow as we head towards a very wintry and cold Christmas day. It's all coming up right now. First at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news is happening in Garden City where two people are dead and a third hurt in what appears to be a murder suicide. And we've learned one of the people killed is a great grandmother. This is all unfolding at a home on Rosslyn near Marquette and Benoit. That's where Rod Maloney has been all day following this story for us. Rod, what are you learning? Well, uh, we're learning that the Livonia Police Department is doing, I mean, forgive me, in the Garden City Police Department is doing what it can to piece together the events that happen here. If you take a look over my left shoulder, you can see a large family gathering. That is the Ortega family. Um, and it, it has been a very tearful afternoon for the family as each member has come here. Uh, they have run and hugged each other. They've been crying, very desperately sad about the situation because of the loss of 77 year old Maria Ortega. Now this is her picture. We have her picture. They provided us with the picture, uh, the beloved grandmother. And it's a situation where uh, she and her husband were home here this morning. And then all of a sudden a stabbing happened. We're still trying to figure out the exact reasoning for that, who was entirely involved. But we do know that Maria is dead. We also know that her husband was stabbed and he was brought to a local hospital and uh, he is in we believe a critical condition. We're still waiting for more information on that, but his injuries are severe. And then there is a third person, a male in his 20s who is dead inside this home as well. And so the family is just desperately sad and certainly so you would expect two days before Christmas. Uh, this was completely out of the blue and they're they're trying as best they can to cope with this. We heard from one family member, Sandy Quintana of Livonia, talking about her now deceased grandmother. My grandma was the most sweetest and most generous person that I know of. She was always so given and so loving. She. She had her heart on her sleeve. She would do anything just to see you smile, just to see you happy. She didn't deserve this. Now, they are still trying to figure out what would have happened, why and how, and they don't know the relationship between the person who was dead inside the home and what precisely might have happened and brought all of this on and what the suicide is all about. So. Police still investigating, Garden City Police still investigating. We're working on this case. We'll have more coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting live from Garden City, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Rod, we'll see you at 5. A woman is facing charges tonight after allegedly making threats to the chair of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers. The FBI says 23-year-old Caitlin Jones sent threatening text message to Board of Canvasser Monica Palmer. Last month, Palmer and William Hartman had initially refused to certify local results in favor of Joe Biden. They later changed their position. Today, Jones was arrested in New Hampshire. At the time of the crime, she was a resident of Michigan. There is simply no place in Michigan or in the United States for chilling threats like this to people who are simply doing what they believe is correct. Just because a person disagrees with us on a political, legal, or moral point, that does not make that person evil. If com convicted, Jones could face up to 20 years in federal prison. Encouraging coronavirus news today from state health experts. Over the past 24 hours, Michigan added more than 3,400 cases and lost 70 more lives. But this morning, the State Department of Health and Human Services said our case count has been dropping for more than 29 days. Hospitalizations are also going down. They say data shows people stayed home for Thanksgiving and they hope people do the same for Christmas. Today, the Trump administration announced it will buy another 100 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine. 
That's in addition to the 100 million already purchased. Pfizer expected to have all doses delivered by July 31st. Several Lions coaches are being told to stay away as the team conducts contact tracing for the coronavirus. The Lions closed its practice facility yesterday after two people tested positive for COVID-19, a player and a staff member. The NFL Network reports all defensive staff and head coach Daryl Bevel are considered close contacts. Today, the Lions say they have no new positive tests. We'll have more on the status of Saturday's game against Tampa Bay tonight on the News at 5. All right, here we are, 50 degrees this week, uh, the week of Christmas of all weeks, and uh, we don't get to say that much around here, Ben. Things are changing, though, right? Very quickly, Kim. Yeah, if you're doing your last-minute holiday shopping, it doesn't necessarily feel like Christmas is around the corner, but it will tomorrow. No doubt about that. Storm Tracker 4 has got rain showers out there. We've seen that line move through, and there's not much behind it right now, but there will be filling in a little bit later on. Uh, as we get into the evening hours. In fact, you can see our temperatures are going to really sort of plateau here as we go through the evening hours, likely be dry here between six and eight and then start seeing those showers develop as we get closer to 10 o'clock leading into midnight. But those impacts really start to become more prevalent as we head towards Christmas Day. The wind kicks in tomorrow. The cold really gets going on Friday. The question is how much snow is coming with it. There are some changes to that part of the forecast. And we'll look at it in just a few minutes. Kim. OK, Ben, we'll see you then. Thank you. The $900 billion stimulus bill is suddenly in jeopardy because of a last minute demand from President Trump. He says the $600 direct payments to most Americans isn't enough. Jason Coltorf is in the newsroom live for us with reaction to this 11th hour change here. Jason, good yeah, afternoon. This is incredible. Good afternoon to you too, Kim. Top Democrats like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi say they support bigger checks. This demand came in a surprise video posted last night where the president called the package a disgrace and a COVID relief bill that has almost nothing to do with COVID. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. In addition to those $600 payments, the bill includes more money for unemployment benefits and small businesses, and it's also tied to the spending bill that funds the government. Congress can't amend the bill because it has been passed and would have to consider new legislation altogether. House Democrats say they might try to pass a separate bill tomorrow that would send out $2,000 direct payments. Because many are out of town now, leaders will try to pass it by unanimous consent. That means any single member can kill it. The current bill took nine months, or I should say, took months of negotiations, and this twist isn't sitting well with everyone. Listen. So then suddenly he says, no, I don't like this, I don't like that. Well, what we need to do is he needs to sign this bill, and then, of course, we can do additional payments. But it was his own party that was blocking them. Where was he? Where was he hiding out? We should go to Washington right now and fix this bill. Make sure that it's not wasting money. The president did not say if he plans to veto this bill, but it did pass with pretty big veto-proof majorities. And we just got word that President Trump did veto a separate defense bill, which is setting up a possible override in Congress. With that, we'll be monitoring all of this, and we'll have the latest coming up at 5. Kim, back to you. Yep, and we'll see you at 5, Jason. Thank you. A lot of people are waiting on word about that stimulus. The number of people applying for first-time unemployment benefits dropped this week, but it is still high at 803,000 people applying. That's actually down 89,000 from the week before, but it shows that employers are still slashing jobs. About 5.2 million people overall are getting benefits week to week. First and four, we're on top of stories making headlines around the world. In Britain, thousands of truck drivers are stranded, left to sleep in their trucks for days. They're not being allowed into France because of coronavirus spikes and a new strain of the virus in southern England. There have been reports of fights between the drivers and some border guards blocking their entrance. But today, there's word authorities have inked a deal for truck drivers who live in either Britain or France to be allowed to cross the border and return home. Now to a story that shows the power of social media. When Wyandotte police caught a suspected porch pi pirate, they needed to find the owner of one special package. As Nick Monticelli reports, it was glaringly obvious who the rightful owner was. We've got like Christmas parties, different birthdays, things like that on there. When Tanya Gill ordered this keepsake blanket for her best friend, Kathy, she never thought the blanket would make headlines. 
the pictures on there are all from things we've done in past holidays together and things like that that we didn't really get to do this year. So um, yeah, it means a lot that, that I get to sh reshare those memories with her, I guess, on there. But it almost didn't happen because it was stolen off the front porch. On Monday, just before 2 a.m., a nearby resident woke up to an alarm on his doorbell camera showing a woman going through his mailbox. Instead of shouting out the window or panicking, he quietly and calmly called the police. That allowed our officers to respond. They caught this porch pirate red-handed. She was walking around the neighborhood. The female um, kind of prowling around the neighborhood at 1.55 in the morning uh, on a winter morning, nice and cold, um, and she had no explanation what she was doing in the area. Wyandotte police think she has taken several dozen packages, pieces of mail, and credit cards. And one of those stolen items? Tanya's blanket, but already out of the packaging, so police had no idea who it belonged to. An officer then posted on Facebook saying, who knows this woman? I was at work and I started getting phone calls and text messages from people and they're like snapping a picture of the blanket and setting, they're like, this is you, this is you. Within 24 hours, the stolen blanket was returned. With everything that's going on this year, people are doing a lot of online shopping and for somebody to take advantage of that, that's just not right. And as for this porch pirate, she is charged with seven counts of mail theft facing seven years in prison. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Hey, Nick, thank you. And we just learned the woman charged in the case has gone before a judge. She is Michelle Marquez, and she was given a $10,000 cash bond. A big GM recall this afternoon. The hundreds of thousands of cars being recalled because of potentially dangerous problems when you're on the road. We'll tell you about that. And when a woman opened her package from Kohl's, she couldn't believe what else was packed inside. It had her calling the health department. But first, an explosion at a high rise sends 10 people to the hospital and sparks a rescue operation. What may to be to blame for the blast? 